uh, we got a call from a customer who said, help us understand this euro risk, and we need to understand what those exposures are. What those exposures are. Okay? Historically, if you would have asked me that five years ago, the majority of people would have asked, what's my euro exposure? But just the fact that they asked, what are the euro exposures? They wanted to know euro Swedish krona, euro yen, euro Swissy, every single one of those exposures. They wanted to then put a special strategy in place of what do I do about euro Swedish krona? That one, I want to get rid of my cash immediately. We're going to, to uh, get, get you know, convert cash. So I want to do. What about my euros that I've got sitting in Italy? Now I'm going to put some, cash, uh, some hedges on there. So they actually just didn't have a straight, anything related to euro, let's go hedge. They wanted to have intelligence, to your point of view, intelligent analytics around a decision that they were going to see to be very meaningful and that the CFO said was very risky. If the constitutional courts of Germany, which they obviously didn't, though with some caveats, said the, the borrowing of the European Stability Monetary Fund is illegal, the world would have been on fire. I'm not sure how much that was followed. I, I know from CFOs and CFOs, I'm hearing a lot of, there were a lot of questions about that. That's not the only issue. What's going on in China? We can have some discussions about that, maybe not right now. Can you quantify the currency impact on, right to the first question of the analyst. So once you understand the exposures, now you're being asked, what's it at the top line? What's the OPEX? And how's that impact earnings per share? You know the data is available, but you need the systems, the people, and the processes to reply to that. How will currency rates affect our earnings and EPS guidance looking forward? Okay, we're talking about trends here. I was yesterday in New York, and as we were talking to a corporation, it wasn't good enough for that corporation to ask the old question that is still somewhere in the item 7A of the 10Ks or the 3 in, uh, in the 10Qs of what's a 10% move on currencies due to my EPS. That's not good enough anymore. The question now is, give me an idea on all my currency exposures, where people expect the market to be, that's the best I can do, and then allocate those expectations to my exposures to give me what I think the market could expect from a risk perspective. If you can't do that, can you at least give me a 99% VAR on my exposures? So these questions are getting very specific, as they should be. That's economic risk. That is, what's my risk this quarter? I want to know, I'm the CEO, I want to know, bottom line, what am I going to go to uh, to the shareholders at? And speaking of SAP, a few years back I heard this to me was, was an interesting story was uh, when uh, the CFO went to see the CEO in Germany and the CFO said, I got good news and I got bad news. He said, well, what's the, give me the good news first. So said, well, the good news is that we're in policy. I've got my IS rights, I've got all these things right. And the good news is, uh, you know, we're on the account, international accounting site, we're properly done, we're within, in, uh, Risk management policies, great. What's the bad news? Just lost $100 million. CFO did a good job. CEO is not feeling too good right now. Okay. What's the risk and the bad news for the CEO and, quite frankly, for the CFO? Was the surprise. That's not a risk they expected. Now you go into damage control. And doing that in front of analysts or investors, I can personally tell you, is not fun. So then the question becomes, okay, now you know some of these risks, <clears throat> can you get to it, what do you do about it? Okay. So this is a point that we've all been educated over the years, but seems to be uh, somewhat new with respect to currency risk management. What are we used to for in graduate schools and finance plans, et cetera, and accounting used to when we look at financial risk from an asset management point of view? This little thing called portfolio. What's the risk for my portfolio? The question is coming up increasingly, what is the risk 
of my portfolio of currency exposures impacting either balance sheet and or total income statement and or the lines that we talked about earlier. You will hear more and more and read more and more how people are not just wanting to hear about the largest five exposures anymore. Benchmark the cost effectiveness of risk management. Here's actually an opportunity to really well communicate risk reward of foreign exchange. Okay. Typically when you have corporate uh, conversations with boards, I hate to say it, the majority of board members don't really understand currency risk. So how do you put the risk in relationship to the reward, whereas even from a risk point of view, the question is often, we've got two and a half billion dollars worth of currency exporters. Oh my lord, that's a lot. What does that mean? I don't know, half a billion of that is in China. We're doing okay there. Now I'm down to two billion. So what does it actually mean? And can you communicate it? So we studied for a long time about how do you communicate in one picture, and I'll show you that in a minute, risk reward, at least as an indication to stakeholders about currencies. That communication we see again and again and again, back to your point earlier as well, it's all about reporting and management reporting. Think about this also on the iPad, what I'm going to show you in a minute. It's not as, as detailed as all the little bars, etc., but I think it gets the point across. Okay, here's an example of a company that needed to understand their exposures, went through a process of understanding those exposures, and then wanted to qualify the efficient frontier. We all remember that word, right? Remember efficient frontier? Yeah. Efficient frontier of the portfolio of currency exposures to, in this case, their balance sheet. How would you like to give to your constituents, to your investors, to your board, a slide for communication and then for discussion purposes, where you all of a sudden will show how well you know your currency risk from a risk reward perspective. So, this one dot is actually a pretty powerful dot. So what you're seeing over here is the value at risk of the portfolio. You're not no longer you're not seeing any longer 225, 250, 270, maybe 350 million dollars here, which is overwhelming. All of a sudden, one point, the risk of the portfolio of currencies impacting this company's balance sheets is 22 million dollars for the 99% more. Now people say, well, what do I want to do about this? <coughs> Where do I want to be? So then you say, look, if I want to mitigate that risk, and we look at this on a quarterly basis, that's one assumption, you can make numerous assumptions, but we see again and again and again, that on a quarterly basis you want to look at interest rate differential as your basic cost of hedging. So, in some instances, you make interest rate differential, on the other side, you don't. It depends on your exposure and what the interest rate between two currencies are. It's as simple as that as we all know. So, they wanted to then know, I want to go past that. They wanted to see what their efficient frontier was. They also wanted to see where they were. So, they were right here, in this case, spending $180,000 a quarter to reduce the risk from $22 million to roughly $12.5, $13 million. So, what's the first thing that you want to do when you see this? So, I think you might want to put that blue dot onto the black line. That is what we all learned in capital asset management and others about efficient frontiers, right? We learned to see whether we can help the company from a risk reward point of view be as good as it can be, and as good as it can be will be somewhere on that line. Now, before you do that, smart companies then go in and say, yeah, I can just take this and try to make a decision where I want to be on here. In this case, I can actually create interest income of almost $200,000, $200, so at a very minimum, I want to risk, reduce my risk as much as possible and make $200,000 instead of spending $180,000. That will be an easy, fast, that's an easy decision, I would think. Okay. Then you say, 
but then a company who all of a sudden has the access to the portfolio of exposures and has the knowledge actually says from a risk point of view I want to look at this and see if I can bring this down this company in February showed this to their CFO and then then in August this to their board they looked at that red dot and they try to figure out what can I do within the company to reduce the risk. Not go hedging. I'm talking about what can I do there to companies? What do the loans look like? What's the business doing that we may not want to continue to do that where currency was an afterthought? We all know that happens all the time. It's like, okay, well, we're doing this contract in sales and we ended up doing it in either where they can pay us in either Chilean pesos or US dollars. Good luck managing that risk. But now you say, okay, we managed it to Chilean peso. Well, maybe you can uh, renegotiate. Maybe you cannot. Where's your billing center? What do you want to, you know, et cetera, et cetera. How do you work that down? So in August, by August, they were actually able to reduce that risk by almost half just by having the knowledge and understanding of where their exporters are. They redrew it, and they decided that's where they wanted to go and get to, to the zero, right to the bottom, right here. But so wanted to go, and that's where they got now, you could have discussions about what do you want to be on this curve. I met with a uh, very large retailer out of uh, Par in Paris on Friday. And they want to draw this curve immediately because the uh, majority shareholder, or largest shareholder, not majority, largest shareholder of this uh, 5.5 billion euro revenue company wants to understand the risk reward before he acts. Well, he feels, if I can show this sort of confidence in the data and in the exposures to management that I really understand this risk and I understand the risk reward and then can get guided by them where you want to be on this curve and then manage it to it, that's best for everybody. So one of the things, I know I'm, gonna, I'm running here a little bit, so I'm going to watch this a little bit close. One of the things that then, then we have done is as you go through all these analyst calls and we do every single quarter, if you're a publicly traded company in North America, we're reading your, uh, your every single word through that little company called SeekingAlpha.com. And uh, we're analyzing who's asking what questions. And so we actually said, how do you help a company communicate that risk? So not only can you do it from an efficient frontier point of view, that maybe and likely is too much information to investors, certainly not to the boards. I've seen 25 slides go down to one within board packages when it comes to currency risk, and that was the slide. Go back to the question, hey, I'm in compliance, but I just lost $100 million. Well, what did I expect? What was the real risk of that in the first place? And all of a sudden, you don't have surprises anymore. You just know you're going to be somewhere between that red dot and zero. That's your first thing you should have. Okay. So, in in uh, in summary, I think the number one, number two thing here, probably two things to really go out of these five, as you see them here, is one is, yeah, we're all hearing about the euro right now. I'm talking to a lot of CEOs and boards about China a lot more than you would imagine. The risk associated with what does it really mean in China. Yes, they understand the euro risk to some degree. It's being talked about a lot. They will understand it more uh, from an exposure point of view. They want to understand it, more understand what they're doing there and what does it mean. I had, uh, as a guest, I was very, very uh, thankful. The, the former head of the Bank of International Settlement came to Phoenix, Arizona in the summer, so that must have been very nice for him. <laughs> pretty hot there, but he came anyways, and we talked about the breakup of the euro. We talked about what does that mean? And a lot of people can't conceptualize, but what the Bank of International Settlement is guesstimating it means, certainly the former head of it, Giacomo said, the only way you can actually make that work is that overnight you're going to have 17 currencies in one account, and the banks are going to really enjoy that, because you're going to convert all that. Rightfully so, they should. That is a problem that the banks didn't create. Now you say, do I want Greek drachma at that rate, or do I want Deutsche Mark back, or do I want French franc? And anybody who thinks that this 190 million euro assignment from the Germans saying that this is what this is okay and we're going to do this solves the Italy crisis, they're kidding themselves. 
We've got between Italy and Spain, you're going to need over 2 trillion euros to fix, and there's a $900 billion fund out there. How's that going to work? I hope the market creates confidence. If they don't, people better understand what their exposures are and not, to Fiona's point earlier, at that point try to react. Thank you.